can you just confirm that under both scenarios, with or without a carbon tax, the cost of climate change would still be felt by Canadians? Uh, uh, Mr. Scher, go ahead for five minutes, please. Thanks very much. I thought just to uh, correct the record from the misinformation that uh, the Liberal MP started off his round with, I would just read for the record the letter that you received from Environment Canada on May 14th that said, uh, the data the department is providing contains unpublished information. As such, I request you to ensure that this information is used for your office's internal purposes only and is not published or further <laughs> distributed. Liberals also had many, many days where they could have published it themselves. And it was only until the opposition put a production order on notice in the House of Commons that they ended up publishing it themselves. So, uh, First question I have, is this normal? Do you often receive requests from government departments not to release or publish information that they provide to you? It, it happens, especially when it's confidential data related to uh, third-party information, for example, commercially sensitive data or national security issues. Uh, so it happens when we dealt with the EV <coughs> subsidies, subsidies for battery, uh, battery plant, uh, plant, plants for batteries for electric vehicles uh, or national defense issues but when it is purely an internal analysis and internal data that's not that frequent it's not that frequent okay so the, the liberals have kind of ranked this right up there with national security uh keeping the costs hidden uh, from canadians on, on the cost of the, the carbon tax have you had a chance to look at what the environment department has published uh, on the website chris uh, thank you for the question. Uh, yes, we've um, uh, we've reviewed the uh, files that were provided. Um, I believe it was on uh, June thirteenth, um, and they um, uh, they are the same files. Uh, there are some additional files that were unrelated that were also provided, but uh, uh, they were the um, uh, the files we received on back in uh, May. Okay, so so they have put everything on that 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 you saw originally when this letter was written to you. Yes, that, that, that is correct. Okay. So just wanted to talk a little bit. First of all, I believe the number, the total hit to the economy, thanks to the carbon tax, is $25 billion uh, by, is it 2030? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that's not adjusted for inflation, is it? Go ahead. Uh, yes, that is the, uh, the impact on uh, real GDP. So it's been adjusted uh, for inflation. Okay, so that 25 would include the inflation. Okay. Um, can, you, can you talk a little bit about what that would mean per household? Like, have you, like, $25 billion on the global economy, what, on a per household basis, what does that work out to? We haven't uh, prepared uh, estimates uh, related to the, uh, the per household uh, impact. Um, for us, the, um, uh, the GDP data that was uh, provided was, was useful to compare to our previous results, but also um, uh, more important and used in the, our actual analysis uh, is the impact on, uh, let's say, investment income and uh, labor income in the economy. So these would both, these would be the, the channels through which households uh, would be impacted. Um, and those uh, those impacts are, are uh, somewhat larger than the uh, GDP impact. But uh, our our uh, our plan was to, uh, as part of our updated analysis of uh, the distributional uh, impact of carbon pricing, uh, we wanted to um, uh, incorporate uh, the um, the results that uh, Environment and Climate Change Canada provided us to provide a. Uh, sort of a, a second set of uh, results if if outside if parliamentarians and outside uh, organizations sorry. had concerns with our model we could we use their model sorry so uh, sorry I, I only just got told I only have about a, about a minute left so just very quickly does do you still stand by your conclusion that the majority of Canadians are worse off with the carbon tax when you factor in all those economic costs lost wages lost investment opportunities those types of impacts when as a result of the fuel charge and the carbon pricing regime at large. So it's including the output-based pricing system. Okay. Well, one more quick question. Sometimes the Liberals criticize your reports because they say you haven't factored in the cost of climate change. But my understanding is that that is because with or without the carbon tax, Canada will experience consequences from climate change. Is that correct? In, in other words, that the carbon tax doesn't 
magically wave away the impacts of Canada. That doesn't create a bubble around uh, Canada at, at all. So can you just confirm that under both scenarios, with or without a carbon tax, the cost of climate change would still be felt by Canadians? I'm not a climate scientist, but based on the scientific consensus, it needs concerted global action for climate change to stop getting worse. So Canada acting alone is not sufficient. So yes, that's a as as much of a confirmation as so, they can give. So even with the carbon tax, Canadians will continue to pay pay the cost of climate change unless everybody else reduces their emissions significantly. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Baines. Please. <laughs> 